Today I'm going to show you how I use the toolpath tiling function of Vectrix Aspire software so I can cut a large sign like this on a small CNC machine like I have. The idea is, is that you can divide up your work into sections called tiles and do all the cutting on that one section and when you're done move the stock and then cut the next section and those sections are called tiles. In order for me to be able to use the tiling function this is really all about aligning and indexing your stock so that when you shift the stock one tiles distance it lines up in the correct place. So I started out with the basic shape that the YMCA wanted for their signs and entered the text that they wanted and the font they wanted. And that was the easy part. I'm using a, uh, a piece of material that is uh, 48 inches long and 14 and 3 quarter inches high. And this is uh, going to be white oak that's about an inch and 1.15 uh, inches is what I'm shooting for in thickness, a little over an inch. So first thing I needed was hold down holes so that I could screw the work to the spoil board so it wouldn't go anywhere. But more importantly, I think, is the index holes. If you notice this little hole right here and here, uh, those are holes that I drill in the material and into the spoil board and they're located exactly one-third of the distance uh, from end to end of the piece. So, uh, you know, if I start here at zero, the first hole is at 16 inches, the second hole is at 32 inches. And the idea is, is that if I attach this material to, you know, to the spoil board, I can then uh, put dowels into these holes, and when it's time to... Uh, to shift to the next tile, I can just shift the whole material. So what I mean by tiling is I've divided the material into three sections. And we're calling those tiles. And uh, I'll machine one section completely. And then I'll shift the material to the next section, which is a, called a tile. and uh, similarly with the third section and these index pin holes are what guarantee that I keep the material exactly where it should be on the spoil board. So uh, you notice that the uh, material here is in the uh, you know the XY direction is the long axis but on my machine I have to feed this material through the the Y axis the the front and back of the shop bot desktop are open so that's where I'll feed the material through. So the first thing I need to do is I need to uh, rotate this material. Uh, so I go up to my material uh, uh, tab here and just reverse the width and the height. So I'll make my width 14.75 and I'll make my height 48. Notice my thickness I didn't have to change. And there we go. It's telling me I have to recalculate all the tool paths. I know that. Now let me just go ahead and select these vectors, which is everything. And uh, using the key number 9, I'll just go ahead and rotate that the way I'm going to want it. And finally, I'll just align that to the material. Okay, so that's actually what the material is going to look like when it's on the, on the desktop. So at this point, I can work on toolpaths because everything is aligned nicely. So I'll go over to my toolpaths tab, and uh, the, what I want to do here is recalculate all of these toolpaths, which I've used previously. That's why I'm doing a recalculation. Okay, I'm not going to go through making all the toolpaths for you because you've seen that in other videos, but I recalculated from the last of the eight boards that I cut. And there's a new toolpath. And uh, I want to rename this from the, the old name to the new. And 
and that way I don't get my pieces mixed up. Okay, so I, the last uh, board I did was Powhatan. This now is Nottaway, and I've renamed these. And now I can go ahead and see what this looks like. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and preview all the toolpaths. Okay, now you notice that that previewed the entire piece. Well, that's not really what I want. I've got to do this in tiles. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my tiling uh, manager by clicking on this icon here that says Tile Toolpaths. Go to my tiling manager and click on Tile Toolpaths feeding in the Y direction, feeding through in the Y direction. It knows that my um, my tiles are, uh, you know, right now one single tile, 48 inches. But what I really want to do is I want to make uh, the tile 16 inches. Three of them. So I'm going to update that. And so now I have three tiles indicated, each 16 inches high. And I'm going to overlap each tile by about a quarter inch, meaning that the, the cutter will move up a quarter inch into the new material. And that way, if you know, it takes away any inaccuracy that might have been caused by any misalignment, anything like that. It doesn't cost me anything. <coughs> Excuse me. And at that point, uh, I can go ahead and reset my my preview here and take a look and see what each tile looks like. So down here, you see over here in the tile manager, it says active tile is tile one. Okay, so we're going to tile, look at all visible toolpaths for tile one, and that's what it's going to cut. And let me see if I can uh, get that fully in the screen for you because uh, there we go. Okay, so that's what it's going to cut. You notice the four hold down holes and the index pin hole. Okay, so I'll cut all that. And then when I'm all done, and by the way, that cutting means I'm going to I'm going to drill the holes for the hold down and index, and then I'm going to drill or cut the uh, clearance uh, cut, and I'll show you that here. Let's go ahead and reset this for a minute. First thing I'm going to do is just drill the the uh, the hold down holes in the index hole, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the half inch bit for clearing this. And I've cleared out most of the material. If you look at this, there's actually some, some depth to it. Okay, It's gone down the depth of the cut. Let's get that line back up. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, the detailed with a ball nose bit. Okay, And I have to rename this now. Okay, I've got to go and rename that to... Uh, 025, which is the shank diameter of the of my bit, and I'm going to call it the pocket with the 025 ball nose. All right, so that's the bit I'm using there, and then finally I do the cutout tool path. Again, let's move that up, and you can see it does all the operations on just that one tile. All right, so when I'm all done with that. We go to tile number two, okay, and we go through the same procedure. We drill the holes. Oh, by the way, I had to unscrew the material and then shift it down on my board by 16 inches, okay. And basically, what I did was the uh, index pin then uh, ended up going into the hole that I had already drilled in the spoil board down here. I didn't show you that part, but I had already drilled index pin holes top and bottom in the spoil board. So all I have to do is shift this whole material down and get that index pin into the hole in the spoil board that's at the very front of the machine. Okay, and then I drill all these new holes and then I go ahead and I do the clearance pocket and I do the, excuse me, the ball nose details and then the cutout. Okay, now let's get, get all that centered. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the, the third tile. Shift the material, drill the holes, do the clearance, 
do the detail with the ball nose, do the cutout, and now you can see I've, I've I'm going to hide that. You can see I've cut the entire piece now. I've got tabs in here holding the work into the waste areas. All I got to do is unscrew this, take it over to the bench, cut through the tabs, do some sanding, and I'm ready to do some finishing. So that's how tiling works. It enables me to take uh, a large piece of work and cut it on a relatively small machine. Tiling is all about indexing the piece, aligning it, as I mentioned uh, when I was showing you the software on the computer. So the first alignment piece, I, I went ahead and screwed down a strip of wood to my spoil board, and then I ran my uh, quarter inch cutting tool to make a very straight edge on that strip, and that'll be my alignment strip for the X direction. Now, the piece of stock is large. You can see that it's four feet long, extends back. I've got a, a roller support back there to hold it. And in the Y direction, I line it up with my mark for the one inch position on my spoil board. Just double check the length. I'm exactly 48 inches, which means that if I divide this into three 16 inch sections or tiles, I can go ahead and cut all of this first 16 inch section and then move the stock out this way 16 inches, cut the second tile, do the same thing, move it out another 16 inches and cut the third tile. So the trick is to keep the alignment perfect so that the observer doesn't know you cut this in three different sections. So as I said, the first thing I'm going to do is align this with the one inch in the Y direction mark, which pretty much centers the work in my 18 inch deep spoil board. And then I'm going to take a couple of clamps and just temporarily clamp this against the spoil board. Okay, so there I'm, I'm clamped nice and tightly up against my strip of wood. At this point, I can run the tool path for drilling the screw holes and the index holes into the material. Now, what I didn't tell you was before I put this material on here, I used the same tool to drill the index holes into the spoil board. So, I can then take a quarter inch dowel and put it into that index hole right through my material into the spoil board and now I am locked in the Y direction. When it comes time to shift the material 16 inches, I take that index hole there, shift the material and then put, put it down into that hole in the spoil board and I've shifted exactly 16 inches and that's the whole idea.
and there we are. Uh, it still needs some work, but uh, we got the three panels, the three tiles uh, cut, and uh, allowed my little ShopBot desktop to do a big job. Thanks for watching. Thank you.